Hello everyone, heard that gate result is out. So I decided that based on my experience, maybe I'm going to share some experiences of what you should be doing next. Let's see what we come up with. I have total five steps that you should be following after gate result. And there are a lot of things that you should definitely not be doing. Like after the gate result is out, people immediately start searching the internet look for what is the topest marks the normalization you talk to your friends most of the time you are disheartened that okay that person got more even though he's he or she studied less all those things you are comparing none of it is going to help you all right so <laughs> there are a lot of things that can help you which most of you guys are not going to do and that is what i want you to do like a mature person like a grown-up like an adult you have to take decisions of what you should be doing after the gate results are out what I have understood from my experience is that gate result is just like any other result. It does not tell you where you are right now or how good you are right now. It gives you an idea of what you were on the day when the examination took place. So the result itself is not a judge of who you are or what you are. It is who you were, obviously. Now, because of that, the result itself does not tell you anything or it does not change your life in any manner. What is going to change your life because of your voluntary action is what you do with the result. And that can be negative either way, even if your result is good or if it is bad. Your future might be going in the negative direction either way, depending on what actions you take. Or it might be going positive either way, depending on what actions you take. So it depends on what you do next. And that is what people don't focus on much. Most people dwell in the past of I made this mistake, I made that mistake, or I was unlucky and this, this, this happened, it is unfair, all these things, but they do not focus on what they should be doing. And trust me, I'm saying this because I did these mistakes as well. Uh, in 2016 or 2017, I made these same mistakes and that is why I'm speaking by experience that you should definitely not be doing this because it might cost you months of your time in future or sometimes even years of your time. It is moment for you to make proper decisions or take proper justified logical steps okay first of all stop crying slash celebrating a lot of people whose examination did not go that well they will be crying too much worrying too much i've even seen like people crying in front of cameras and getting lakhs of views which is crazy five years ago i would have never expected this to happen but people are doing this now if people are crying in front of camera i could only imagine what people are doing off the camera and a lot of people who are frustrated again dwelling in the past doing this obviously will not help you at all the second one is celebrating i've seen people having terrible career post the result in both direction like even if people are getting very good spectacular rank and gate examination they are ruining all their subsequent examinations and even the interviews that they got the call for because they are super hyped up their ego is inflated and in the contrary, the people who did not perform that well, their ego is so deflated, so low self-esteem that they can't make any decisions anymore. They do not have trust in their self. Like one examination is sufficient to stamp you as a winner or a loser. In, in two years or so, everything is going to change back to normal. Even the toppers that you are seeing today that everyone is willing to interview are going to live just some normal life two to three years later so this is the problem with this country that we look at competitive examination as some sport like the people who are winning this are awarded and uh, they are glorified they are interviewed like they are celebrities and the opposite is faced by the people who did not do that well because those people who did not do that well are seeing those people getting all the attention by everyone else not not only by the media right now which is currently youtube but also by the surrounding your friends sometimes even family members sometimes relatives sometimes your neighbors that's the thing that is going on which is not true at all ultimately it's just an examination to maybe get you a job or to get you a higher studies when did that became a certification for success or failure it does not make any sense, but this is the way that it, it has been going on since I think close to eight, eight to 10 years, ever since a lot of PSUs joined gate examination. And uh, IIT, JE examination has been like that since forever. So anyways, stop crying and stop celebrating because it is time for neither.
this is the time for taking steps and taking decisions and that's what we are going to do step two is make a decision obviously people who performed very well in gate examination they do not need to decide they are not going to appear in gate examination again but if you did not perform that well in gate examination that is not a certainty that you are going to appear in next year who told you that you have to do it you don't have to you make your decisions according to your priorities whether you want to appear in this examination or you do not when should i appear for gate examination as if today there are no other reasons than these two number one if you're looking for a government job and number two if you're looking for a higher studies in iits or some government colleges in india if you're looking for higher education in india or looking for a government job those are the only two reasons if you should be appearing in gate examination or not if you are appearing in gate examination just because you need a job that is the stupidest reason that i have heard to appear in gate examination because there are much easier ways to get a job you can go for private sector you can go through a lot of courses you can learn a lot of new skills and get a job but appearing in national level examination in the technical field which is super difficult where like very small fraction less than one percent people find success to get a job how, how does that even make sense to you so if your reason is one of those two then go ahead if you think that you are good enough for that you want to give it a try definitely go ahead if you think that you can work hard and you can be dedicated towards it you have sufficient amount of motivation go ahead otherwise you are not supposed to appear in this examination or any competitive examination in a similar field like psus and all so once that decision is made then there are certain steps that again both the toppers and the average or the below average performance are going to take and the next step is that you have to continue on preparing for subsequent examinations so like i said a lot of toppers get super super ego inflated and they stop preparing for the subsequent examinations i've seen people in like 2018 who performed very well in gate examination and performed terribly in isro examination in the same year did not even qualify i've seen a lot of gate toppers every year tens and hundreds of gate toppers gets rejected in barc interview happens every year if you look at barc people who are qualifying barc interview a lot of them are not even under 1000 so how did they get selected because a lot of people who are under 1000 under 500 under 200 under 50 did not get selected a lot of them appear and get rejected i've seen a lot of esc topper not getting selected through isro interview not because they were not capable because a lot of them did not focus on those interviews that well did not prepare for it that well and a lot of people which is having a like backside rank had no other option so so they focused 100% on those interviews and cracked it so either way you cannot get complacent even if you are having a super good rank and if you are having a super bad rank i've seen lot more people scoring uh, very badly in the subsequent examinations because now they are super demotivated they accepted by themselves before getting into the examination that i'm no good there are thousands of people who are much better than me that does not make any sense because every examination is different and that is what you wear in february let us say first week or second week and now in 2 to 3 months you must have gotten better why aren't you looking at that and a lot of people must have gotten worse because their examination in gate or gate examination on that particular day went very well so you have to think about things logically from your own perspective that is the thing that people generally look at others and outside when they should actually be looking inside and analyzing and that's the next step you should be analyzing your performance because before this there might be a lot of confusion that what is the exact amount of marks that i'm going to get but now it is certain this is what you got so you will have to look at what are the mistakes this is 100% certain so what are the things that you need to work upon if you are going to appear again or the subsequent examinations what are you going to work upon what are you going to improve upon you have to analyze i'm sure that 99% of the people are not going to do this and all of them are going to spend time crying but you have to analyze without that there is no next step after any mistake after any failure without the analysis how are you going to take the next step if you do take it and your past was not that good the future is going to be the same so analyze and keep preparing and the final one which is also something that you should pay attention towards is fill all the forms there will be a lot of upcoming examinations like hal cil barc maybe isro you fill all the forms you keep your eyes and ears open even if 
you performed very well in gate examination even if you are under 50 a lot of you guys will be saying that bark job is much better than any of the job in any of the psus maybe because you are interested in nuclear science and engineering so don't go in the direction the herd is going look at what is best for you a lot of people quit their jobs later even in engineering services or PSUs or BARC or ISRO because they are not satisfied because at this point where they should be looking at what they are interested toward they generally look at what the world is interested towards and whatever they are interested I'm going to go over there so fill all the forms maybe you are interested in research maybe you are interested in higher studies there's a great example Anshuman Mehta who finally after failing or not performing that well in gate examination realized that his actual interest is in higher studies or aerospace engineering right now he is doing PhD and a PMRF program he has been on podcast multiple times so if that is your goal then you should be filling forms for all the IITs not only for MTech but for MS or RA program as well the three year programs and also fill the CCMT form you can very easily get NITs I got NIT Jamshedpur with a rank of 9008 in 2016 uh, you can easily get a lot of top NITs as well even with a rank of let us say 1500 or 2000 there are a lot of rounds and you will get something or the other if you are interested in a particular field you'll always get something even if you are not gate qualified there are a lot of mtechs like bits pilani where you can go ahead and do your masters without gate score you will have to go through an entrance and it will not be funded but you can do your masters if you can afford it so there are a lot of things that you can do but you will have to find out in this time what you have to do and the next steps has to be taken properly because the result itself does not impact your life that much it is what you do next is what is really going to impact the next months the next years or maybe your life itself how it is going to go so at this point i just want to share one example all right so let us say there's a manned mission okay so there are three people in a spaceship a great example for this will be Apollo 13 so they are trying to go to the moon and midway there's some malfunction there's some malfunction or failure of let us say oxygen cylinder and now if they start panicking like what happened to me why did it happen to me it should not have happened to me I can blame that person that person I can blame that person if you do this you are going to die instead of that you have to think about what is the next step that i should be taking what are the next five steps that i should be taking what is logically correct if you do that you are going to survive that's the way that you have to look at this result as well it is a setback to a lot of you guys but even worse would be if you do not take this setback that well to get a positive outcome on the other side that's all that I had to say. And that's about it, guys. If you have further questions, please put it down in the comment section. I know it might be a tough time for a lot of you guys. And my heartiest congratulations to all of you guys who did well. Super proud of you. Nobody deserves the credit other than you yourself. You have worked extremely hard. And uh, now you are reaping the rewards. And go ahead. All the best for your future. And those people who did not do that well, well, you have to stay strong a little bit longer. And I'm sure that it is going to turn out positive. Put your questions down in the comment section. Maybe I'm going to be covering it in the upcoming podcast. And thanks for your support, guys. Hit like if you like this video. Hit like if my channel helped you in any ways in preparing for competitive examination. If you are new over here, there are abundance of content over here with the guidance strategy, planning, revision strategy, test series. If you are preparing for gate examination next year. And that's about it. That's my time. I'll see all of you in the next one. Till then. Bye.